the Steinheim skull has long been a source of consternation in paleoanthropology. The cranium has the most unusual mix of hominin characteristics in the European Middle Pleistocene. Several human lineages, evidently at the species level, coexisted with Homo sapiens across Africa and Eurasia during the late Middle and late Pleistocene. In fact, paleoanthropologist John Hawkes wonders whether Steinheim skull of Germany may be a Neanderthal's Homo sapiens hybrid, or an archaic Homo sapiens. We now know that early Neanderthals were influenced by genetic exchanges with Africa, and hominin fossils from Apodyma Greece, which is close in age to Steinheim, also may reflect this mixing. The Steinheim specimen, discovered alongside elephant and rhinoceros bones, has been dated to between 250,000 and 350,000 years. This period overlaps with the exchange of genetic materials between Neanderthals and early Homo sapiens, as well as a period of warmer climate when archaic humans were on the move. Many bones, including elephant, rhino, and wild horse bones, had been discovered in the gravel pit prior to the discovery of the Steinheim skull. As a result, the archaeologists excavating the site were already aware of the possibility of skeletal remains in the quarry. Fritz Berkheimer visited the site on the same day the skull was discovered, and examined the still-hidden skull in the wall. The next day, he began the meticulous excavation. The shape and dimensions of the skull made it clear that it was not a monkey, as had been initially suspected. Indeed, it turned out to be an archaic Pleistocene human skull. The skull was roughly cleaned, hardened, and plastered to ensure its safe arrival at the Museum of Natural History. There were no other artifacts discovered at Steinheim, no artifacts from the people or other skeletal remains discovered. There were also no tools discovered at the site, such as stone tools or bone implements. But it can be assumed that the hominin was capable of creating tools and using them for a variety of purposes. Evidence of this can be found around the same time frame in this region where archaeologists discovered some Acheulean tool culture fist wedges. The skull has a long, slightly flattened shape, moderately heavy brow ridges, and a rounded back portion. Steinheim is usually classified as an archaic Homo sapiens or as Homo heidelbergensis, because it does not deviate from the normal range of variation for these traits in these species. Steinheim retains some primitive characteristics that are intermediate between Homo erectus and Homo sapiens such as heavy brow ridges and a small cranial capacity of 1,100 cubic centimeters, which is similar to Cranium 5 from Atapuerca Saima de los Husos. According to archaeologists John Hawkes and Roberto says, the spherical brain case is similar in shape to that of Homo sapiens. Many researchers attribute the skull to Homo heidelbergensis, but this specimen actually supports the hypothesis that Homo heidelbergensis is a single umbrella term for multiple fossils from various geographies, including Maua, Arago, Petrolona, Bodo, Broken Hill, Dali, and other Middle Pleistocene discoveries. These are not assigned to Homo erectus, but we do not have a complete understanding of the migration flows to assign all of them to a single species. Remarkably, until the late 1980s, the Steinheim fossil was known as Homo sapiens steinheimensis. In turn, Neanderthals were known as Homo sapiens neanderthalensis at the time, before the out-of-Africa theory became firmly implanted. Nevertheless, many paleoanthropologists now regard Neanderthals and modern humans as distinct species, with a Homo heidelbergensis-like being serving as their possible last common ancestor. As a result, two separate species must be considered, Homo neanderthalensis and Homo sapiens. According to some theories, Neanderthals and Homo sapiens may have had a different chronological ancestor than Homo heidelbergensis. Steinheim, along with other European Middle Pleistocene specimens such as the Saima de los Husos population, is also sometimes referred to as an early Neanderthal. The Steinheim cranium is gracile, and it appears to be from 250,000 to 350,000 years ago. It is smaller and has weaker cranial features than other European remains, such as Arago 11 or Petrolona. The occipital bun is the only clear Neanderthal feature, while many other features anticipate Homo sapiens, such as the presence of a face that is longer, smaller, and flatter than the Neanderthal face. We now know that it is more accurate to refer to a Neanderthaloid group or a Neanderthaloid stage. The most recent members of this group, which includes the classical Neanderthal specimen, lived in Europe around 100,000 years ago, at the height of the last glaciation. 
This cold Neanderthaler was not the ancestor of modern man. His position among the Neanderthaloids is a form adapted to harsh living conditions. Yet, from earlier levels, such as those of the warm period preceding the last ice age, we know of a warm Neanderthaler, whose skull is shorter and higher and has less prominent supraorbital ridges. The German finds at Steinheim are included in this category, according to paleoanthropologist Ralph von Koenigswald. This type of Neanderthaler is easily transformed into a modern primitive man, i.e. Homo sapiens, by the Neanderthaloid features becoming less prominent. This transition most likely occurred before the last ice age, as excavations on Mount Carmel revealed a Paleolithic population with Homo sapiens, and Homo neanderthalensis characteristics that must represent a hybrid race. However, according to yet another recent study, the Steinheim skull is the sister of a clade that also includes Homo antecessor and two obscure skulls from Africa. According to this classification, Steinheim are a distinct species from Homo erectus, Homo heidelbergensis, Neanderthals, and Homo sapiens. Another new study suggests that Neanderthals, and anatomically modern humans first interbred 250,000 years ago, which is much earlier than previously thought. Humans and Neanderthals did, in fact, mate 250,000 years ago. A comparison of the genomes of a Neanderthal who lived 120,000 years ago in Siberia, and modern humans in sub-Saharan Africa, revealed information about both species migratory and interbreeding histories. According to a 16 genetic analysis published in the journal Nature, Neanderthals, and anatomically, Homo sapiens were thought to have first interbred more than 75,000 years ago. But, a new study, published in the journal Current Biology, found that around 250,000 years ago one group of Homo sapiens from Africa interbred with Neanderthals in Eurasia. This group of archaic humans died out, but they left a genetic imprint in the DNA of Neanderthals descended from this interbreeding event, with human DNA accounting for 6% of a Neanderthal genome discovered in Siberia. When groups of humans who had interbred with Neanderthals migrated back into Africa, some sub-Saharan populations of anatomically modern humans inherited Neanderthal DNA as well. The improved understanding gained from this research will allow us to more accurately annotate Neanderthal DNA in modern human genomes, as well as the reverse process. This will aid scientists in predicting how interbreeding events influence the physical characteristics of both groups, as well as improving our understanding of migration patterns and interactions between modern humans and Neanderthals. The idea that most modern human Neanderthal interbreeding occurred in Eurasia was challenged in 2020 by a study published in the journal Cell that discovered Neanderthal DNA in human genomes in sub-Saharan Africa. Nevertheless, the origin of this DNA was unknown, and the study was restricted to populations with primarily Niger-Congo ancestry. The authors of the new study compared the genome of a 122,000-year-old Altai Neanderthal from Siberia to 180 people from 12 modern sub-Saharan African populations. They then created a statistical tool to help them figure out where the Neanderthal DNA came from in the modern human genome. The statistical analysis looked at genes shared by humans and Neanderthals to see if certain alleles, or genetic variants, appeared to be Neanderthal in origin but made their way into modern humans, or vice versa. The researchers discovered that all of the sub-Saharan genomes studied contain Neanderthal DNA which was primarily derived from this 250,000-year-old human Neanderthal interbreeding event. Some sub-Saharan populations had Neanderthal DNA in up to 1.5% of their genomes, which had been inherited from humans who had returned to Africa. Furthermore the authors discovered that the majority of human DNA in the Neanderthal genome was in non-coding regions, DNA that does not code for proteins, implying that human genes were selected against during Neanderthal evolution. They found that Neanderthal DNA was missing in human genomes at the same location. Therefore, with Neanderthal paleontology strictly limited to Eurasia, the molecular exchanges between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals are consistent with the continuous existence in Eurasia of a Homo sapiens population that is much older than the basal divergence among extant Homo sapiens populations, namely that between non Africans and the Pygmy Bushmen. The paleontological support for this theory is similarly supported by the discovery of Eurasian Homo sapiens fossils whose ages, 200,000 years, exceed the age commonly associated with the dispersal of Homo sapiens out of Africa by 130,000 to 140,000 years. 
the redating of the fossils at the Jebel Erhoud site in Morocco, which increased their age by 100,000 years compared to an earlier study of the same site, makes the fossils relevant for discussions of Homo sapiens evolution in light of the deepest divergence among recent humans, 250,000 years ago. The basal divergence within the Homo sapiens lineage itself becomes placed at 250,000 years ago the time of the two Yoruba exoduses into Africa at 225,000 and 180,000 years ago, respectively, and the age of the basal divergence among recent non-Africans at 125,000 years ago. Three of these estimates, 250,000, 225,000, and 125,000 years ago, correspond with warm global temperatures preceded by low maxima as recorded in analyses of Antarctic ice core records. The picture fits with an archaic Homo sapiens population that went through three cold-related bottlenecks, each of which was followed by population expansion and dispersal. Although the timings of the molecular estimates and climatic changes may not be exact, they highlight the scenario of oscillating climatic conditions that are likely to have affected vegetation and population structures, in both humans and their prey, due to changes in sea levels and dispersal routes. These discoveries, as well as the Eurasian placement of basal Homo sapiens, are a natural extension of the extensive Eurasian, paleontological, and archaeological records, relating to the origin and evolution of Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. Nonetheless, the existence of these studies, and thus their phylogenetic implications, has been ignored by out-of-Africa theorists, 